I know that we're we're getting a little bit long here, and so I, I want to begin to wrap things up. But before we do, I guess I, I really want to put a bow on all of this because I feel like so many of the conversations that we had tonight and the issues we were discussing at, at the heart of those issues is a real existential question about what is a trans person? Like, what does that label mean? And we have tried over and over again on this show to explore the uh, maybe the nuances and the philosophy of gender politics. We've also looked specifically at the science, the genetics, the biology of a trans identity and tried to come at it through all of these different angles and lenses. But I, I guess ultimately, I don't know that there is a singular answer but I, I would love to hear from y'all some ideas around how we should even be conceptualizing that cis versus trans dichotomy and how we're drawing that line, what the organizing principle is for some of these boxes, and, and maybe a better way of framing the conversation around a lot of these trans issues. Uh, now, take all of that. You got about two <laughs> minutes each. So uh, go now. Go ahead. Oh my gosh, you put me on the spot, Cindy. Okay. Um, the first thing I would say off the bat is that the what a trans person is, apart from just being a person, because let's just agree that like trans people are people and that should be enough, but unfortunately it's not for a lot of people. So I think there's a lot of, of hype and a lot of hysteria and a lot of blowing things out of proportion and, and attributing uh, medical procedures and, and, and policy and, and, and law and all of this to trans identities. What it means if you are trans is that you are a gender that is not the gender that was given to you when you were born. That's it. That's what that means. And it can manifest in so many different ways. And so just kind of defining it as that and letting people understand, okay, there are people who were given an identity, a gender when they were born, before they were born and agree with it. And there are people who were given a gender before they were born and disagree with it. Like it doesn't sound radical because it really isn't, right? That's, that's essentially what we're talking about. And then all of those other conversations happen when we say, okay, how do we best support all of these people all at once and make sure that we are not minimizing the struggle of any one group? The only other thing I would point out here is that, um, God, I completely lost my thought. I was going to point something else out, but I completely forgot. Oh, I you have a full 20 seconds. Left. I remember. I remember. Okay. I said God and I remember it because it was about God. If God is truly a This is creator, how he reveals himself. Right? <laughs> Through cursing. I like it. Um, <laughs> if God is truly a creator of you know, strange and wonderful things that are beyond our understanding and are varied and different and magical and, and unique. Like all of these things we attribute to God and God's creation, right? If you are a religious person, why is it so difficult to imagine that there is more than one type of person, right? It's so narrow-minded to assume that you uh, are allied with this God who is so big and expansive and, and incomprehensible. And yet God is somehow limited to box A or box B, right? Mm. That's not the case. And it, even if, even if we were to grant all of that theological baggage, it wouldn't be the case. Well said. Sydney, anything you want to add? Yeah. Um, the question I got the most when when I um, announced that I was going to do the, the transition was, um, I'm a man and I don't particularly feel like a man or I'm a woman and I don't particularly feel like a woman. So how can you be a man and feel like you, you are a woman? And so uh, to, to explain this, I, I used um, a very specific case of people uh, that happens in uh, Dominican Republic. Uh, they're called um, uh, Gevedose, it's, it's Spanish, uh, J-U-E-V-E-D-O-C-E, -E -E. you can look it up. Basically, it's uh, uh, their uh, boys, and when they're born, uh, they basically uh, are uh, girls. And when they reach puberty, they become uh, men, I mean, 
they, they they grow a penis at 12 and hence their name and it's it's i'm not going to go into the science behind this because it it takes time but it, i think it's fascinating but if you can put yourself in the shoes of of those children and imagine that you are a boy and because of a very specific problem that happened uh, nature decided that you would be born as a girl and try to put yourself in in their shoes and imagine what you would feel every day when the the, the way people look at you the way you look at yourself in the, in the mirror and try to imagine the the impact it could it could have on you and then you you might have an idea of what transgender feel all their life so i suggest you, you people look look it up uh, of what gave it say are uh, why they are born this way and what happens uh, at puberty where this uh, penis grows and try to put yourself in, in their shoes because it's a really fascinating uh, medical case and still it can give us uh, an interesting look into what trans transgender can, can feel. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate you kind of giving us a model tonight and helping us walk through these issues. It uh, it really feels like a marathon. We hit on about 10 episodes worth Ooh. of arguments uh, over the course of a good 45, 50 minutes there. So congratulations on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but as, as fast and as hard as we have been working while we have these conversations around trans policy issues and, and some of the uh, dangers experienced by trans folks, I want to acknowledge both with a lot of gratitude and uh, just warmth in my heart, the hard work of our moderators, while also holding on to just a, a small sense of anger that when we have these types of conversations, the trolls really do come out of the woodwork. And uh, we, every time we raise one of these topics or have an episode like this, we really do see all of the aggression and the, the vitriol get poured our direction. So uh, with that being said, I am just incredibly grateful to all of our moderators, as well as our audio and visual engineers, our tech team, and everybody that helps make this show possible and keeps everything on the rails. Uh, just a wonderful cast of beautiful and hardworking people helping to get this show together. So thank you all so much for all of your work tonight. Love the crew, Cam. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I'm so excited. I finally got to talk with you, Cindy. Thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Me too. Yeah, uh, you, you said hardworking uh, crew, and I can attest to that because I became a mod uh, for the ACA recently, and I discovered that the work they put up is really, really amazing. And so I wanted to 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 say something about this. And again, thanks for inviting me. It was it was a blast. I'm, I'm really glad to meet you, V and, and Chrissy. It, it was very interesting to, to talk about this. And, and again, thanks for having me here. Absolutely. So glad to have you. And uh, so glad to have hopefully forever and ever, now that we have solved the problem, <laughs> put these issues to bed. So great work, everyone. Thanks, team. And uh, with that, I think everybody should take a nice celebratory opportunity to give themselves a, a big old orgasm. Or better yet, give, give somebody, somebody else, else one. one. <laughs>